Welcome everybody to the Arizona Cardinals Rebuild Franchise on Madden 19. Last time we saw J.W. Unger make his NFL debut as a starting quarterback. And I'd say so far that there's a lot to be impressed with in terms of the play we saw in those first few games. So with JW, we have a player who seems to be very accurate. I like the decisiveness as a quarterback. However, the turnovers have been a little bit of a concern for me. Hopefully that gets cleaned up. The plan today is to renew the rivalry that we have with San Francisco. They are currently 2-2 two two on the season. I would like to see us play against them, Trey Brackenridge, see if Hunter Hogue gets on the field, which I doubt he will this season. But we'll see. And I, once again, took a look at the comment section like I try to do before every episode. But sometimes I record a couple in a row, so I can't, obviously. And a lot of you are talking about how I haven't been addressing linebacker. I definitely didn't scout the position last time. But I think that it is time to look for another field general that can take over in the middle. And field general just seems to be a very thin archetype every year there are more run stoppers than anything and some pass cover guys but field general kind of means that you have both those things in your skill set so here's deontay wallace b tackle b minus pursuit c plus zone coverage so field generals can do it all and a lot of these guys are probably close to being field generals but they're just better at a certain thing like deandre black he is a coverage linebacker, really good man, good zone, but B-minus tackle, he might be very good at both and close to a field general. I think that's one of my favorite schemes or archetypes in this game. So I'm going to scout the top linebackers here, block shed here for Denard Levy. If I could have a, a dream top three here, I want it to include tackle, zone coverage, and block shed and you don't normally come across that. Another thing to keep in mind, which I think should change, is that Field General is only an archetype for inside linebackers. So, a lot of these outside guys might fit, but you just wouldn't know unless you were to look at the ratings and to just calculate in your head what you think it would be. Deontay Graham is not gonna be the Field General. He's not fast enough or skilled enough in coverage. Jose Hayes is a really similar player. He has one less speed. He's not a good cover linebacker. We're much better now, it looks like, with the run stoppers than it looks like with uh, field generals. Marshall Donaldson, he's more of an edge rusher. We have Jalen Smith, and here are the ratings at this stage. 78 overall, 85 speed, 80 zone coverage, 88 tackle. Those are really solid ratings. And I think he could still have some solid play left, but it's obvious we have to go find another guy. Parker Wood, I don't think will ever be that field general I'm looking for. He's just too old to develop now. He's 27. Oh man, I'm almost 27. Am I going to stop developing too? Parker Wood, 86 speed, 84 zone coverage. Very good stuff there, but tackling is never going to be a strong suit. We could always try developing Devontae Steed, who is a coverage linebacker, and if you were to get the perfect sequence of events, you could probably get Devontae Steed to being a good um, field general. He already has good coverage, decent tackle, decent speed. It's just he's not going to be as fast as the really fast guys. Tackle is good as the best tacklers, or cover is good as guys like Deion Jones. Am I the only one that thinks the Dolphins should stick with Joey Gilmore, unimpressed with alternatives? Alright, that's a coincidence that they bring up a player who used to be on our team. Let's go check the Dolphins. Joey Gilmore. Didn't get to play enough here. 76 overall, 29 year old. You know, the kind of player who tends to get replaced. Let's check out his stats. What's Joey doing so far this season? Oh, not a whole lot. Yeah, Gilmore never panned out, partially because he didn't play enough as a young guy. Let's go check out what Lester Phelps has done so far this season. How about that? I do want to see, you know, if they can develop Phelps because he still has the time. Phelps wearing number 16, number 24 ranked quarterback in the league. That sounds about right to me. And what's he got this season? Four touchdowns, two interceptions. 
All right, not a whole lot here. Not the best yards per attempt, completion percentage, or passer rating. That's kind of all we get to judge it by. Do we happen to play them this season? Because if we do, it's an automatic watch. Please say we do and we don't. Unfortunate. But we are going to get closer to this matchup now against San Francisco. Let's see how we do. Arizona falls to 1-3, not getting many yards here against New Orleans. Charles Brenner, two touchdowns. JW, one, but no interceptions, but not much great either. On the ground, Kadron Sharp getting 3.7 yards per carry. Michael Thomas shredding our defense as Lucas McAllister continues to produce along with Martavis Caldwell, two players who are really taking off this season. Howard Iwabima gets a sack and a half. Ontrell Massey getting down there for one. And then Jermon Pryor back from injury. Remember, Jason Lemon is set to miss six games. That was the first one. So, or it was the second one. I can't remember now, actually. But one of the topics brought up lately is how Lemon hasn't really been producing. And it might be wise to look for another running back. And I totally agree. And that's something I'll talk about a bit more as we get into the game. And I can speak a little bit more about it actually I guess now is as good a time as any but basically I do think that even though ratings for a player can be really good at some point you've got to say okay the production isn't there we need to try something else like we had David Johnson and he produced really well for us before getting lemon and then lemon showed so much promise just based on the ratings that I thought we had a superstar on our hands and we're now a couple years later, and we are still wondering where that superstar ability is. We've seen glimpses of it, but by now you should be seeing way more. Like, think about Saquon Barkley as a rookie. We haven't even seen that from Jason Levin. The big plays. The struggle is real right now for this team. 35-7. to 7. 231 yards of offense. Lucas Hoffman throws four touchdowns. J-Dub, a touchdown, a pick, six sacks. So, it's one thing to be like, okay, we have a young quarterback, we have our backup running back in there, and an undeveloped core of receivers, so we're going to struggle. But there's no reason to expect us to give up six sacks. That doesn't make any sense. Wendell Branch gets a touchdown. Anything positive here on defense? I don't think so. Oh, Jalen got a pick. He can still do that. So that puts us with a 1-4 record, and we are still going to watch the San Francisco game. I do want to check out JW's traits. When they created this new archetype system, it seems like the whole trait system was an afterthought, and it made him even more valuable in a way just because they can't change. And you also really can't see all of them clearly unless you go to the edit player menu. So for JW, we have the star dev. Undisciplined penalty, ideal sense pressure, balanced force passes. I don't even know what throws tight spiral means for Madden, but he throws a tight spiral like I hope an NFL quarterback, one of 32 humans to do this job could do. He's also clutch. That uh, is probably really, really good. So I think we got a, we won the draft lottery here. We won the trait lottery with JW Unger, I'd say. I think because I've seen so many good, like, short and medium route running players, the valuable set of traits I'm looking for now is, like, high short route running and high deep route running. That seems to be a less common combination. Hey, we get to finally upgrade somebody today. It's Denard Huval, a player I've been really wanting to upgrade. And I think with him... 85 zone, 82 man. Let's go with more zone coverage with him. Denard Huval, plus two. But going back to what I was saying about Jason Lemon, like one of the things that I've always believed in doing series like this and franchises is that you can look at ratings when you have very little information. Like you haven't seen players play, so you just go with the best combination of ratings. But after a while, you've got to start giving more precedence to the actual on-field play. And just sometimes, players who have good ratings don't work out. And players who have worse ratings make plays. And I like to stick with the guys that show they can make plays. That's why Christian Kirk was here for so long, and why Curtis Samuel has stuck around. 
If you go back to the UTSA dynasty I did many years ago, it's the perfect example of when I had Dominic Carter, who was a middle linebacker, who was like a 65 overall. And I played him over guys who were in the mid-70s for overall, because even though he was low-rated, that didn't stop him from picking off passes in big moments, or jarring balls free, or making big tackles, and being overall reliable. And that's where I think we're getting with Jason Lemon. Like, we're just not seeing enough production. And I think this offseason, I've got to get a legitimate player that could challenge him for his job. I know he has the high dev. I know he has the high ratings. But if the yards and touchdowns aren't there, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty hollow what those ratings mean. At the 26, this is Garoppolo handing off, and a good tackle made by Parker Wood. That's Buchanan carrying. Third down and seven. Garoppolo got him. First down, 49ers. Second down and three. Nice stop. Good play right there. I love it. That was Jose Hayes on the stop. Now can we get off the field here, please? Third down, Garoppolo steps up, fires downfield, and has it broken up. Good defense, Spencer Barnes. I'm also beginning to think that next episode, tomorrow, is going to be a pretty big one. You see where our series, our season is going, right? One and four record. Here's J.W. Unger on first down, finding his man on the outside, but it's broken up for Parker Tate. You know what has to happen next episode, right? You know what next episode's gonna be all about, right? We have officially placed Joey Bosa on the trade block. I think that for where our franchise is at right now, it makes way more sense to try and move him than extend him, even if he's going to be a great player. If we're losing like this, oh no, this is the John Gruden logic. Oh no. This is like trading Khalil Mack almost, except for Bosa's 30. But if we're losing with him, then we've got to do something else. John Gruden logic. Hashtag. First and ten. Nowhere to go for Sharp. But, obviously, Bosa's not going to be getting better at this stage. I think that the proposal of being able to trade him, getting a quality pick and a quality player in return, would be really just too good to pass up on. And potentially we could get someone that I could work on developing over the course of the rest of this season, giving a lot of playing time. So, next episode, I'm definitely looking to trade Joey Bosa. And the goal is to get a high pick and a player with potential. Third and one. It's not going to work. It's Kadron Sharp getting smashed in the backfield. All right, we'll do some simming now in a game that likely won't become very good. But we'll see if there are some positives to take away. I love watching our new quarterback play too. So I want to get a, a lot of reps here with J.W. Unger this season. Here's the last play of the quarter. Unger got Parker Tate again. Who hangs on to the football thankfully. Here comes Isaac White in motion. The short throw connecting White up to midfield. Uh, it's been suggested that I even consider trading Isaac White, and I totally get that uh, train of thought. But I just think that Isaac White should stay on this team right now. We don't really have other great receivers. I don't think that if the, we're going to trade him, that now is the right time. That's a nice play out there for Sharp in space. It was also suggested that I tweak the sliders a little bit, and I'm not going to do that. I played the entire Brown series outside of one game on Default All Pro. This is also Default All Pro. And I I think that's best for series like this. And obviously, we watched Todd Gurley. What did he do the first five runs he did against us? He ran or ate down our throats. So obviously, it's an even playing field in terms of sliders. If they can do it, we can do it with the right players. So that's what I love about this series. And obviously, sliders aren't going to impact... Um, the simulating anyway, so that's where running's actually worse, I'd say. Oh, Isaac White. Can't trade him. Can't do it. Just think about, like, if you want to see J-Dub reach his potential, you don't want to trade away Isaac White. That means touchdowns are going down and yards are going down. That's only logical. We need those. 
first and ten. Here goes Kadrin Sharp, but not for much. And plus, with this recent patch that came out in January, which I think is one of the worst patches I've ever seen for a sports game, sliders on here, editing them is a nightmare. It is not fun. It is not logical. You can't just edit something by 10 points and observe the changes because who knows what's happening underneath the hood of the game. Nothing makes sense in terms of sliders. So I am tired of touching sliders. I'm sick of it. The only sliders I want are going to be from a restaurant. That's knocked away. We got on the board, thankfully, but here comes San Francisco with a first down or two, third and long. There we go. So, um, over-under set at, I'm going to set the, the in-game over-under at 24 and a half. Let's watch the offense again here. Starting this possession in San Francisco territory, we had them backed up. Man, are we just that much... Are we just not good up front still? Is Jared Strojny not the answer? Second down and 10. Here comes Tate in motion. It's another run now to the outside and just not working. I could look at mixing up the types of runs that we have in the playbook and trying to find more stuff that works. Not much is right now. Third and a dozen for J.W. Unger. And he makes a good decision and a good throw as well. I love seeing quarterbacks when things get tricky and everything is not working as planned. You still make a play. You're a good quarterback. 24 yards to Shundrez Buchanan. I think I'll watch some of this drive. Oh, we got him backed up. Actually, we'll just see if they punt this. And, okay, don't repeat the play. There we go. So defense, you're stepping up today. I love it. J.W. Unger to end the half. We are probably just going to go in here with a 6-0 score. What a great game. This is preseason football right here. 26 seconds left. Oh, don't help him out. I want this shutout. It's the dream. I'm thinking maybe a few more runs from under center. There might be some better stuff there. I'm not sure exactly. Nice job breaking on that football. Third down and nine, Unger. He's gonna sail down the sideline. It's a catch by Martavis Caldwell. That connection is growing this year into something special. And I wanna see what that can mean for the development of these two players. Obviously, Unger as a rookie is gonna have a chance as Sharp breaks off an impressive run. That's a good run of six, but I really want to see, you know, J-Dub, can he win Rookie of the Year? And then for a player like Martavis Caldwell, like, what does it take for him to get meaningful upgrades as Sharp tries to spin again with lesser results? Third and two. Good block from the fullback, and there we go down the sideline. All right. I could get with more of that. We're going to run this again, and now it's Wendell Branch. Nope, that's Love. Love gets three. It's the fullback dive, isn't it? I know it already. Oh, it's a fake. They got me on that. Unger, no. Interesting idea. Another field goal coming right up. We'll do a bit more simming now. This game really isn't changing in any way. As Sharp is running backwards. And a 15-yard penalty right on time. Let's get across the 50 now. That's like three negative runs on this drive. That probably shouldn't happen. Third and three. Knocked away. And no long field goal. Let's go back to some defense. From the five-yard line, this is a run up the middle. Come on, guys. I thought he might just split the whole defense and run right to the end zone right there third down and seven got some rush there and Garoppolo is on target hey we haven't talked about him much today Trey Brackenridge on second down a short completion here and that's a few yards Brackenridge has seven catches for 74 yards on the day. 
Garoppolo here at the line, needing four. Jimmy, almost picked by Jalen Smith. We'll watch a little bit more of this one. I want to see if we can get a touchdown out of J.W. Unger. On first down, a fake to Sharp and a strike. Like, our offense is showing some signs of some good stuff here. I like the timing out of Unger, the accuracy. The receivers do a good job. So, I'm hoping that a lot of the players we have right now are the players that we need to succeed. Blake Bortles in Carolina have the Rams on upset alert. That's pretty cool. Third and three now for Unger. They'll bring an extra man complete over the middle. Caldwell into San Francisco territory. Unger on first down. Again, accurate on time. Finding the open Martavis Caldwell. I just really want to have some more sequences in series like this where I can take a player like a Martavis Caldwell and completely change the caliber of player that they were or that we perceived them to be. I want them going from being like just a complimentary player to a true star. I think that would be awesome to see that kind of an ascent. Third down and in inches now. We're going to throw for it. We're going to get it. Tate. On first down, fake to Sharp. He gets it away in time, and it's nearly caught by Tate. It feels like with Unger, like every play has a shot to work. Here's third and seven now for Unger. It's Tate inside the 15-yard line, and he is hurt on the play. That was catch number six, and hopefully it's not serious. I assume Pierce Hamilton's now in the game. Nope, I think Curtis Samuel is, actually. I'd like Hamilton to be there. From the 11, Unger has time. Needs to be smart, and he's sacked. Tate is already back in. We had a delay of game. There was just some bug. I was trying to get out of the simming to put in Hamilton, and I couldn't input anything. Second and 25. Unger, that's a big completion to Parker Tate, who seems to be all right. One thing that's actually going to help the development of J.W. Unger is just how bad of a team we seem to be. We're always trailing, which means he's always throwing. Third and seven. Unger, end zone, denied. This is the exact kind of game I would assume you'd get between teams like this. It's 12 to nothing in the fourth quarter. We might pitch a shutout today, everybody. We'll see if we can pull this off. Here's Garoppolo on first and 10. Oh, what? Come on, man. Come on. Buchanan all the way out on first down. Don't do that again. Garoppolo, what a strike. Buchanan's out of bounds. First and 10, Garoppolo pressured by Bosa, who sacks Jimmy Garoppolo. Is that his last sack in a Cardinal uniform? It's sack number 100. Well, Bosa obviously was a part of our team when we won the Super Bowl, so that wasn't a bad trade, but... Obviously, I was hoping we'd have a few more years of sustained success and not what we've had after the Super Bowl. Here's Garoppolo scrambling on second down. He's sacked again. No. If Bosa's hurt, I can't trade him. Um, that could be a big deal right there. Please don't tell me Bosa's hurt. Sack 101. I'll have to do a tag and trade after the year if that's the case. Here's Garoppolo. Third and long. Oh, he overthrew Ryan Hoffman. Just over the fingertips. Fourth and 23. Garoppolo trying to break the shutout. No, it's broken up by Denard Huval. Let's go. We're a step closer to the shutout. Can we complete it? We are so close, getting two yards running. Martavis Caldwell, goal to go, score, or take a knee. And we can celebrate one of the most thrilling victories of the series. The Cardinals win 12 to zero.
No touchdowns today, anybody. <laughs> no touchdowns. And we uh, definitely hit the under in this game. Here are the numbers. The quarterbacks really unable to get much going. Low yard per attempt. Low QBRs. Kadron Sharp, 3 a carry. Buchanan, 2.3. Brackenridge, 85 yards. Parker Tate, 56. Caldwell doing a good job. No big days, though, around this team. And please tell me Bosa's not seriously hurt. I want to trade him next episode. And I cannot if he is hurt. Howard Iwabima gets an upgrade today. Again, we go speed rusher. I want his speed rushing traits to get better. It's obviously like a bugged thing right now where block shed and power go up. So how do I actually increase his finesse move? I want to get that above a 90 if possible. Do I have to upgrade power? All right, moment of truth. Any new injuries? No new injuries. Okay. We can do this. I want to trade Joey Bosa. And we're going to add him to the trade block, so when I sim to the next week, we actually might get some offers. I hope someone can take on that contract. So, um, let's check the re-signing, though. Joey Bosa wants another big deal, obviously, $85 million. Aaron Howell at 24 years old, that's really reasonable. Let's make the baseline offer right here, which I think he'll decline. And we'll come back to it next time. Huval wants a reasonable contract. Deontay Graham wants five a year. Kadrin Sharp. Parker Tate wants about seven. And I'd say for the role he's played in the production he's put up, like that's a reasonable figure. I like when they make it tough on you to really think about if you want to keep a player or not. Titus Green, I definitely want to keep him. Good 24-year-old backups can be tough to find. And he's going to stay with the team for three more years. Garrett Baronis is up after this year. Jackie McAllister. Curtis Samuel. All right. A few tough decisions to make. But mostly I just want to trade Joey Bosa. We could afford this. Definitely. But I think that we've got to work on some other areas of our team right now. So the last thing I want to do in this episode is just simulate to week eight. Which is the trade deadline and see if we get any offers and then come back to them. If I leave that offer menu, does it go away? I seem to remember that being a thing or something. Oh, Jason Lemon has been cleared. We have trade offers for Bosa. I might actually clear Lemon because I want him to play. I really want him to play. I'll have to think about that. But here are the trade offers for Joey Bosa. What do we got? I want a pick and a player. These offers are not what I expected. There are some first round picks in there though, but the ones that include a player are not including a high pick. They know that his contract only has like 10 games left. So I'll have to think about it. Maybe make some offers manually and see if they work. But let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Should I trade Joey Bosa? Is it the right decision? What do we got to fix if I can get a player? What kind of player should I try to acquire? Let me know down below in the comment section. This team has a lot of work to do, and I like your feedback. And I try to take some suggestions from there as much as possible to see what you want me to talk about or different things you're thinking for the team. And I think that uh, it adds a lot to the episodes. I really enjoy your feedback. So that is going to do it for today, everybody. Thank you for supporting the series. And know that there's a lot more on the way. Please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check back tomorrow because another one's going to hit your sub boxes. Have a great day.